Hello YouTube. It is Friday, the 22nd of March, 2019. Um, so I had somebody ask me what to expect at Schneider Training. I watched their little video just so I could see what they said about their own training and figured I would embellish upon it and let y'all know the majority of what to expect because I mean I, I don't know it, it's changed a little bit since I went not by much though when I went it was one week of class then you went out with your TE and then it was another week of class um, which I don't know it was kind of silly but the uh, the second week they went over what your TE you thought your weaknesses were and you drove a little bit more and did some classroom and did some computer work. Alright, so <clears throat> what to expect with Schneider training. I'm just going to do it overall as what to expect with Schneider training and overall everything else. So this is it. The money's okay. I, I wrote <laughs> two pages of notes here. The money's okay. Company only cares about your safety and their equipment safety. Mostly it's a safety, they're a very safety oriented company. Um, if you run into issues, they will address them. Uh, I spoke with a driver, I tried to help him. It was already too late at his point. I think he's been canned. But uh, I discussed with him what his weaknesses might be or what his problem might be because he had. Um, 11 criticals or something like that no three accidents and 11 criticals the majority of them were hard braking so if you step on the brakes really hard if you slow down a certain amount a very very quickly I don't know how many feet it is in a second but I mean like if you literally have to lock them up or step on the brakes hard enough where your product is going to shift it triggers a warning that will be sent to a communication warning that will be sent to your DBL and it'll also be sent higher up the ladder so you got higher up the ladder if your DBL doesn't get it he'll ask the DBL if he got it and the DBL will call you or have you demand that you call them if anything like that happens like you get a little red dot on your Qualcomm I don't know where it's going to be on the tablet but on the Qualcomm next to the clock there's a little red dot or orange dot, depending on what the issue is. Now, if the red dot shows up, call your DBL. Um, but yeah, I discussed with him, it didn't work out uh, as far as I could tell. He, he had a heartbreaking issue, and I told him, I was like, look, just the main thing, guys, is, is take your time when you're driving, okay? You're hauling anywhere from, even when you're empty, you're hauling 20 tons. You can kill somebody really easily injure somebody that could be your relatives think about it um, just be real careful <clears throat> and make sure you do pre-trips I bricked up a trailer with 40,000 in the box yesterday day before yesterday and it had literally had no brakes the, the pressure on it was um, well, I, I turned it in and said it's out of service Anyway, <clears throat> so there are a lot about safety. Um, you have to take a lot of personal responsibility here uh, for your own success. Um, if you manage your time correctly, don't screw around with long breaks. Don't be an issue for your dispatch team to deal with, and don't start trouble a lot. You can be successful here. I mean, if you... Uh, cause a lot of issues, don't understand a lot of things that they're telling you, ask for help so it doesn't become an issue because if it becomes an issue, the more of an issue you are, it'll probably be the less that you're going to roll. <coughs> um, they're not going to grease the squeaky wheel, basically. So you can get, your miles can get cut and you'll end up going broke 
I mean, you'll end up leaving and being another company's problem. But, I mean, if you can't make it here, then you might not be cut out for it. I, I've found it pretty easy. I mean, just get your trip, trip plan it, get to where you're going, drop the product, and don't cause problems with the customers. It's, it's actually really simple. Uh, run yourself as if you own the truck. Take care of it, manage your time, run your loads, and everything will be okay. I mean, if you act like you own that truck, pretend it's yours, it'll give you a good idea of what you need to do. You know, unless you're not a good manager of your own time, I don't know. <laughs> um, some weeks you're not going to make much. It's supposed to be slow until April. go out for training, I don't think you have a choice in this. Somebody said try and get an OTRTE. Like if you're over OTR or if you're regional, try and get an OTRTE because they're the ones that are going to take you. You'll have multiple accounts that you're going to be dropping and picking up at. So an OTRTE has the same kind of route. If you end up with a dedicated TE, they're dedicated to specific stores, specific PCs, Walmart, Target, Floor and Decor, Walking Shepherd is dedicated as well. GP is dedicated, but not all their facilities are the same. Um, try and get a TE that is the same as what you're going to be running. <clears throat> you're not going to get rich here. Not going to happen. Uh, now, the, um, the IC program, the choice program, but the SNI financing is, is really good. Uh, I'll give a breakdown of that later on. I actually have a guy that y'all can watch that went through this company. He was here for over a decade and uh, didn't like the way certain things went down and decided to leave and start his own business. He now has over 15 of his own drivers, although he's not able to drive that much anymore because he is um, so busy doing the office work. It's not just sitting in the office screwing around when you own a company. Uh, one of his drivers found that out the hard way when he was filling in for him, but uh, I'll give you all that guy's name later on. Um, pack for the weather, like when you're going out with your TE, or if you're going to from one state to another, check the, what the weather's going to be like for the next couple of weeks while you're in your training class. You will get cold. Do not bring shorts unless they're to wear after you're done with your class. You cannot wear shorts. You cannot wear tank tops. Mostly protective gear. Um, now they say once you're out of training, they don't care what you wear. I don't like, I, I like looking professional, so that's why I'm actually not in my collared shirt today. But I like wearing collared shirts when I'm at work dress for the job you want, not for the job you have. I intend on being an IC. And I intend on looking the part. That way, I mean, if something happens and I decide to go out on my own, that's what I'm known for, I guess. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> uh, that's just the way I dress. I mean, you dress how you want to dress. You could be one of these clowns that wears flip-flops or socks with them weird looking flip flop sandals and drive with your feet up on the dash like a clown uh, I'm sorry but your reaction time you're, you're not going to recover your vehicle when you drive with your feet on the dashboard you're not going to be able to recover your vehicle you know I just don't understand the way some of these people are this is 40 tons to 50 tons that you're hauling around when it's a full load and you know I, I knew I've known people that have watched have videos going while they're driving down the road I know people that talk on the phone Schneider doesn't allow you to talk on the phone while you're in the truck they tell you not to you will see Schneider drivers doing that um, you can get fired for that if you get in the wreck and they check your phone records, yeah, they can check your phone records for stuff like that. 
to see if you what you were doing while you're driving. So me personally, I'm not gonna risk it. If you're gonna get me, it ain't gonna be for that because I don't do that. I don't have a problem with talking on the phone, but I don't do that either because if it's against the regulation, you're not gonna hold that one on my head either. It's gonna be for something I completely don't know because I just I just don't uh, see the need to push any buttons right now. There are certain things that uh, I don't approve of that uh, I've read about them doing, but uh, it's a whole nother ball game. A whole nother story there. Hack for the weather. No shorts, shorts allowed. Follow, follow their instructions. I mean, if they need your, if you have a CPAP machine, which is one of those breathers for at night, so it helps you sleep better. If they want the chip out of that CPAP machine, when you go in there for training, you better have it that day. If you don't have it, you're not coming back. I've seen them literally get rid of people that day because they didn't do that. We had a guy in my class. He had, bring your prescriptions. Bring your medication paperwork. We had a guy come in there that had some medications from the VA or whatever. I don't know. Um, I don't know what happened, but he was gone. Uh, something having to do with improper paperwork. And he said he was going to come back the next week or the week after that. Uh, I don't know if he did. I didn't see him again, but I wasn't really looking. Uh, the shoes. What else we got here? Only shirts with appropriate writing. I'm not sure what that means. I guess you can't say crap. The dirty words, stuff like that. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't wear shirts like that. So. Uh, most OCs, if you have a car, you can drive to the OC and back. Like once you get to the hotel, they you don't get paid for gas once you get to the hotel. If you want to drive to the OC and then drive back, you're not getting paid for that. They will not reimburse you gas for that. You will get reimbursed for gas for going from your home to the training center for training. And when you leave the training center to go back home, you get reimbursed for that. But what you have to do is you fill your tank up and then you go all the way to the OC. And before you get there, fill your tank up. Write down the reason for that receipt on the receipt like um, home to training and your employee ID number and maybe where you get in the training at, I'm not sure I know I had to write my employee ID number and home to train and then training to home so I got reimbursed for those when I drove my car up there um, if you're taking the shuttle they have a shuttle that goes from the hotel to the OC there's probably going to be two of them because usually classes are packed. But by the end, it's usually down to one. You can carpool. You find yourself a friend um, that'll take or let you ride with them. You know, because sometimes the breakfast of the hotel ain't the best. We would. Uh, I got. I had a guy that uh, was a couple of rooms down from me, and we carpooled with him. Um, me and him would run. He lived in, near where I was at. And to quick trip in the morning, got breakfast, and then went to the OC. So, I mean, if that's what you want to do, you can do that. Because, I'm sorry, a continental breakfast at some of these hotels is continental crap. St same old crappy waffle and coffee that tastes like butt. Um, I'm sorry, I grind my own coffee. This coffee, I mean, if you like military coffee, hey, good for you. It's, it's okay. But I, I don't like that stuff. I had to at least get some kind of flavor. More like uh, black water is what it tastes like to me. Um, receipt. Yep. Fill it out properly. Bring your prescriptions. Uh, use your breaks and your lunch to talk to your relatives and for smoking. Um, try not to use your phone while you're in the training classes. Unless you need it for a calculator or something like that, I wouldn't recommend it. They will frown upon that. <laughs> you might get your wrist slapped or something. Uh, be back on time. They frown upon that as well. If you don't show up on time or you don't come back from your break on time, uh, don't be the one that everybody's waiting on. You back of the class dwellers. 
Um, there might be homework. There might be homework that you have to do, like filling out a um, a sheet for your time, um, your day log, whatever it is. They might make you do that. They might not. I don't remember mine doing that, but then again, I did all my stuff while I was there, waiting on the van, and <clears throat> just while I was there. So, well, I didn't wait on the van. I carpooled with a dude. <laughs> Never mind. I still did all my stuff there, because we were usually done about the same time. Try and get all your computer work done early. When you, once you find out you have computer work, finish as much of it as you can, as quickly as you can. That way, you won't be the last one sitting there trying to finish doing it. There will be a mad rush for the computers sometimes, and sometimes there won't. Uh, you can't watch videos on your phone. They're, they're not compatible. It doesn't work. If you have a tablet or a laptop, I would recommend you bring that and hook into the Wi-Fi at the hotel or at the OC. Uh, you, most of them, if you go to Schneider Guests and just log into that, just remember those are technically not that secure as far as security goes I wouldn't do any banking or anything on it I leave your banking and all that other stuff with secure passwords um, at a um, you know a connection where it's actually a secure connection because most of those I know when I was into rebuilding phones and stuff like that if you used a internet connection that did not require a password it's a lot easier to get all your information than when you didn't so just remember that don't miss the shuttle <laughs> I mean if you miss the shuttle you're gonna have to take an uber and they probably won't pay for that because you get two chances I think to get to your hotel uh, it depends on your class though check with the front desk as to how many shuttles run Your recruiter will lie to you. They will tell you all kinds of crap. That uh, and sometimes recruiters lie. I'll just put it that way. Uh, don't believe half of what they say. Uh, ask around. Um, for us, uh, go to Schneider Pumpkin Drivers. You can go on that page at Facebook. If you're interested in being an owner operator, Schneider Owner Operators page is another one. Uh, if you want to know about gas mileage, uh, there's one called Nine Plus. Oh man, I don't even remember. I'll have to write that down for the next episode uh, if anybody wants to know. So the new thing is two weeks of class and then one week with your TE. It's not the one one. So you'll be stuck in that hotel. And the one in Atlanta, if you're going there, i got to warn you now, that place smells funky. I don't know what they did. And watch out for the hookers uh, in the hotel across from yours. Uh, I wasn't approached by one, but they did wander around, and they were sitting in the smoking booth uh, for a little while there, too. So, And I know those Indians know what's going on. You can't tell me they don't. <clears throat> You will be issued shoes <laughs> on the shoes when they, they'll they ask you your shoe size. You, they'll take you to this room that has a locker. At least they did in Atlanta. I don't know how it is anywhere else. So they took me to a room that had a locker, all of us. And you pick out what shoes you want and you try them on and say, okay, that's good. Those are not your shoes. Do not take those shoes. You will have to give them back. Thousands of people have tried those shoes on. You probably don't want those nasty shoes anyway. They will ask you what kind of shoes you want, and you'll get them. So they don't carry those sneakers in a size 14, so don't bother asking. I mean, if they do, somebody please let me know, because they owe me some shoes. Uh, I didn't want to get the Georgia boots, but I did. So I think I'm the only one that got those big brown boots. <laughs> I don't care. They'll still stomp people in the face or crush bugs, kick tires, stuff like that. They're good for lots of things. Um, we had a guy that actually took the sneakers, put them on his feet, and walked and sat back down in the classroom, and then we couldn't find, they couldn't find the shoes they were looking for, 
for other people to test out. Needless to say, that guy lasted like a week after training was over. So um, you'll get a kingpin lock. You'll pay for that. Unless you, if you have a kingpin lock, bring it. You don't have to bring it like all the way, but bring it with you. That way you can prove to them you have one. That will be for secure loads if you ever, ever have to drop it. Because they, when you're hauling a high value load, they want you to drop the trailer, pull out from it, put the game bin lock on it, and then bag back under it just to where it's there. Which I don't quite understand that because to me that tells me, hey, they got a real high value load. Right? I don't know. Anyway, um, you'll get a kingpin lock. You'll be paying for that. It's like fifteen dollars out of every check for four weeks or something. I think it's it's either thirty or sixty bucks. I'm not sure. You'll get straps. You'll get an atlas. Um, you'll get trip sheets. You'll get expense sheets stickers and you'll get pod stickers which is proof of delivery stickers what I recommend you do when you get your truck is get one extra thing of trip sheets get one extra thing of stickers expense not the expense stickers just the pod stickers you're not going to need um, you're not going to need the expense stickers because you don't buy a lot of stuff thing is time management. Time management is the key in this business. Your chair setting, they actually have health people. Like if you start getting a backache while you're driving, just this is another one of the things that I didn't hear a lot about. But if you have a problem with your